So for all of the, regardless of how stupid you think the stock is, how do you adjudicate when to double down on an investment? Ooh, right. look at her. Suddenly she's at a blackjack table. She's at the, she's <laughs> no, at the Bellagio. No Have you ever heard a person at a blackjack table say adjudicate? I'm sorry. That's true. That's true. That's, that That's true. would never happen. Well, well maybe when Emma goes with her friends. Um, yeah, what do they sit around with monocles and say, how do I adjudicate <laughs> whether I take a hit on this, this my jack time. I've been to the casino twice. I was overwhelmed both times. I do not want to go back. Yeah, it's a terrible experience. Smoke-filled, terrible experience. Um, it was just uh, stimulating. But Sheldon Adelson appreciates that you were there. Uh, <laughs> so this is actually sort of an extension of the do you think it will go up question, really? Uh, it's True. when do you double down is really the same question as when should I get out. Um, yeah, you're asking the same. I, I used to love your questions, Emma, but now I'm realizing you're asking the same question over and over and over. Oh, wow. Wow. Just, just Are you saying, done I'm over just, there? I'm Go just putting it out there. Or something. This is all I got. You're beating me badly. So this is all I have. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so here's here's the, 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 the question I would ask you, um, given all that we, uh, we've already talked about, right? Like, um, because you can take the sell side analysts, look at future cash flows and earnings potential. You could determine whether you think the company's undervalued and wait for valuation mm -hmm. to increase. You could do the management team's awesome thing. It's like, like they're the big three of the Miami heat, whatever, you know, comp you want for, for, you know, that tells how old I am. I'm Don't still on date the big three, right? Like, um, there's balance sheet valuation way, the bullshitty ways to do this. Really, the question you have to ask is, do you like it and for how long? That's it. Mm. And you can use obtuse data points to decide that. You can use concrete data points that you say, like, this one proves it. Um, um, the, 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 and the market won't care either way because the market can like a thing for a long time for reasons that have nothing to do with, like, the juicy COVID bath it's been in for a year. Um, we can't figure out why the market often is disjointed from reality. It's really up to you to say, I think this has long-term potential based on whatever the fuck you feel or you don't. That's, that's it. That's it. So the I'm, question, I'm double down. I'm intrigued to see what Emma thoughts. does. I have two thoughts on your answer here. Number one, the fact that you use the term big three in a basketball context and did not talk about the Celtics and instead chose the Heat oh, was upsetting interesting. to me. I was thinking the Warriors, but okay. No, it's back in like 08. It's like the 08 Celtics. That's, oh, that's, your, that's your big three. I'm old. So yes, absolutely. It's, it's I'm trying to be modern. Okay. No. Um, also, the Heat, whatever. No. The Warriors Secondly, had a big four. All right, keep going. All right. Secondly, all of your answers to all of the questions we have asked have had a component of magic. Here comes the hammer. That apparently magic. is entirely what the stock market is comprised of. Welcome to the market. I hear my W an investor. <laughs> At the age of 22, all of these like safe professions that are like, go be a financial advisor, go work on Wall, like, Ooh, whatever. Who says that? You have friends that think that well, way? Well, you've always yeah. been posed to people my age. Like, okay. if you go to work in finance, you'll always have money, and it's oh. a good profession yeah. to go into, and everyone does all their Excel spreadsheets and seems oh. to know what they're talking about. But turns out it's all fake, and no one knows what they're talking about, and I feel lied to. I was oh, going to say, I thought you were going to say that, you know, what, well, you know what you're talking about. You no, know but about. everyone acts as if there's concrete facts backing all this stuff up, and it turns out... The Not only so much. concrete facts. All right. The only there, there are lots of numbers. There are lots, there there yeah. are lots of ways to change those numbers, spin those numbers. There are arguments. There are narratives. The market mm. is built on narratives. The only concrete fact that you ever have when you're investing is inside information. That's it. There's no other concrete facts. Oh. There's all now speculation about where the market's going to go. And the market is an amalgam of morons. It's basically mm. just people making the same choice over and over and over and over and over again. Like, do I think this is going up? Do I think it's going down? They will use different numbers from you. They'll use the same numbers from you and come out with different conclusions. They'll use information you don't have. They'll, inf they'll use less information than you do have. They will still make choices. Their willingness to spend their money gambling on those choices is what separates investors from everyone else. 
because investors effectively take the responsibility for the money that they're going to chuck at their dumb ideas by getting gains and losses. That's it. So what I just heard was anytime I encounter a man who will defend the stock market, but make fun of astrology. Oh, interesting. Yes. Those things hold about the same amount of reality. Emma, that's a good point. I wish we could bet like on an astrology somehow. That, that would be a, that's a great idea. You can, because you can. There are actually people who read astrological signs and then invest in the market based on those signs. Oh, no, but that's different. Okay. We that's should that's do more, that one time. That's more like Magic 8-Ball, though. I'm talking about actually like betting on like personality the position of Sagittarius, you can <laughs> yes, do that. Exactly. You can do that. Yeah. Because yeah. science has figured out where Sagittarius is going to be. All I'm saying is that the stock market seems to be comprised of nothing real. And at least astrology is based on the stars. At no, least the stars seem to be real. I don't know, Emma. Is there anything more realer than $5 of Unilever? <laughs> you should do that voice all, all, more often. I like it when you do it better. The, look, the, the market All this is... said... I am definitely intrigued about what Emma's going to be doing this week. I want to. I really want to get to her moves. What are her moves? Well, we're gonna we're gonna we find yet? out. But the, the 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 market is full of tangibles, right? Like there are active stakeholders in the market who are real people. Every one of the companies you're investing in has employees. Every one of the companies that you're investing oh, in has a building or a post office box, wow. they have a physical wow. location. They require physical space. Those people require oh, food. Talk. All I'm saying is that there are tangibles underpinning things uh, or, or, or it would be astrology. At least it, 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 astrology doesn't have any real underpinnings that you can't say the positions of the stars are anything that is a real underpinning to astrology. Everything's make-believe about astrology. So there are real mm -hmm. things in the market. It's just the price and how much that price moves is based on a overarching narrative that um, that you get told. 